everyone, my name is Ms. Connolly. Um, I started making some videos for my fifth grade students so I could teach them during this crazy time and then got some requests to try some other grade levels to help some of my friends who are parents at home and now I'm just trying to make as many math videos as possible so people can learn as much as possible about math while we're at home during this crazy time. Um, if you have a topic that you want me to cover, ConnollyMathAtHome at gmail.com. I'm happy to make a video for any grade levels, first through fifth. I'll try kindergarten. Um, I teach fifth grade, I've taught fourth grade, and I taught second. So I've been doing some research and plugging in the holes if you need something covered in any grade level. Okay, so today we are going to talk about subtracting two-digit numbers. Um, in the primary grade. So end of first grade, beginning of second grade, and then I did a video also about um, subtraction of two-digit numbers, but this one is going to focus on using the representation of tens and ones. Um, so this is for our early subtractors. I'm so excited for you. Subtraction is so much fun. So let's get started and think about what's going on. All right, so let's talk about 37 minus 15. Okay, so in the early grades, we're going to be thinking about what we know about groups of 10 and the ones place, groups of ones. So what we do when we subtract is just like you did when you, friends that are um, younger, when you did 8 minus 5, you might have shown all 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you might have crossed off 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then saw that there was 3 left over. So that's showing all and then crossing off and then counting what's left. So we're going to do that, but we're going to do it with tens and ones. So we're going to do that same strategy, but we're going to be thinking about showing groups of tens and ones and then crossing off like that. So let's look at what's going on. In first grade, students work with cubes and they make cube stacks of 10, one, two, three, to represent a group of 10. To make this representation quicker, we're thinking about strips of 10 being the same, and then the individual cubes, instead of drawing an individual cube, we're gonna draw just a single, um, a single dot there. So what, uh, what's important to understand is that these cubes that they were using can be pulled apart um, to make 10 singles, 10 groups of one, and when we put them together, they make one group of 10. So this long line, to show it quicker, we can break into 10 ones, but it stands for a group of 10. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, instead of drawing all of this, because that would take a long time, is I'm going to represent 37 with three strips of 10. That represents 30 cubes, so 10, 20, 30, and then I'm gonna have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, and so we've shown all, we have shown all 37, 37, okay, and tens and ones. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cross off, just like I did with the circles, with um, 15. So the goal right now is for students to make the connection between the representation and the numbers and what's happening, because what's happening is really fun. So we look at how much we have to subtract, and I see a one as the digit in the tens place, so I know then I'm gonna cross off one group of 10. So, what happens when I cross off one group of 10? Did anything happen to the singles over here? It did not. Everything stayed the same over there. All that changed was the groups of 10. So, I'm gonna just show you with equations what's happening in case your student is ready. When we do 37 minus 10, we're left with 27. Okay, the only thing that changed was the digit in the tens place, and I'm going to show you a representation, other, uh, another tool that students might use. If we're starting at 37 and we subtract 10 on the hundreds chart, the ones place doesn't change, just one group of 10 is taken away and we're at 27. So after the student crosses off all of the groups of 10 they need to cross off, they're going to cross off their five singles. So we're going to get rid of I'll do it right here. One, two, three, four, five. So we can see what we're left with. 27 or 37 minus 15. We subtracted 10. And we subtracted five more. And we're left with 
22. 10, 20, 21, 22. So what we want students to start seeing is that when we subtract a group of 10, the 10's place changes, the 1's place remains the same. One way to subtract is to keep 37 whole and subtract um, 15 in the groups of 10 and then the groups of 1. Okay, so let's try another one and then we're going to go into what happens when the digit here in the ones place is greater than the digit here in the ones place. So we're going to go over that too. All right, so one more example where there is no regrouping, but important to understand. Fifty-eight minus forty-six. So I'm going to represent fifty-eight. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Long strips of ten. Five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Five groups of ten is the same as fifty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've represented fifty-eight. And what we can do is we can go fifty-eight minus ten at a time or we can cross off all 40. So if I had five groups of 10 and I subtract four groups of 10, can you predict how many groups of 10 are left? Five groups of 10 minus four groups of 10. One, two, three, four. I'm sure you could have predicted that there was just one group of 10 left. So what happened over here? Nothing changed. 58 minus 40, the ones place did not change. The eight singles stayed there. We didn't do anything to them. The tens place did change. We had five groups of 10. We subtracted four groups of 10 and we're left with one group of 10. Students know that five groups of 10 is 50 minus four groups of 10 is 40 and one group of 10 left is the number 10. So then what do we do next? We subtract the ones. So I've subtracted 40 so far. I need to subtract six more. One two, three, four, five, six. How much am I left with? I am left with one group of 10, that did not change, and two singles. So 18 minus six is 12. The hundreds chart becomes very important when students are thinking about what happens when you subtract a group of 10. So I'm just gonna model over here. If you're at 58 and I subtract a group of 10, four is in the tens place, another one, three, two, one. So I subtracted one group of 10, two groups of 10, three groups of 10, four groups of 10, five groups of 10 minus four groups of 10 leaves us a one as a digit in the tens place. And if you want to continue on the hundreds chart, then you would count back one, two, three, four, five, six, and you would see that you land on 12. And that's a tool that they'll start using after we have a really good understanding of the representation. So what happens when we have a strip of 10, but we don't have enough ones to subtract from. Let's think about it. So let's start with 42, and we're gonna subtract 29. So I'm gonna represent 42. 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42. And I'm gonna carry on with subtracting as I always would, so I'm gonna start with my 42 and subtract 20. So the students know four groups of 10 minus two groups of 10 leaves you with two groups of 10 and I don't touch the singles. 40 minus 10 minus 20. And you see the 22 left over. So now what the students have to think about, what all of you are thinking about at home, is how are we gonna subtract nine? So I know I crossed off 20. How am I going to cross off nine if I only have two singles. Well, let me just remind us that this strip of 10 represents two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, represents 10 cubes. So we can take the strip of 10 and make 10 singles and it's the same amount. Okay, so this is something they've been discovering. So just for double checking purposes, right now I have 22. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this group of 10, the strip, and I'm gonna change it to 10 singles. I wanna make 
make sure that I still have 22. So I have my 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I still have the same amount. I'm just looking at it in a different way. I've taken the group of 10 and I've changed it into 10 ones. Now I can cross off the nine. So let's get rid of nine singles here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How much is left over? We have a group of 10 and we have three ones. So 22 minus the nine ones is a group of 10 and three ones. Okay, so what just happened was regrouping. And we do this when we're using the US standard algorithm. So it's really important that in later years, in fourth grade, what's really important is the students understand that if you have a group of 10, you can change it to 10 ones. Because what's gonna happen when we get to subtracting with three digit numbers, they're gonna realize that they can take a group of 100 and changing it, change it into 10 tens. They can take a group of 10 and change it into 10 ones. So we're developing that place value understanding from a really young age. So let's do one more example of where we have to regroup. Not called borrowing anymore, parents. Hard to remember, even when you're teaching it. Okay, so let's start with 33. And let's take away 15. All right, so I'm going to represent 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33. So I'm showing all of my representation of 10s and 1s. And I'm going to start with 33. And I'm going to subtract the 10, and the students are going to know that three groups of 10 minus one group of 10 leads us two groups of 10, and those three singles are still there. So I'm going to get rid of the one group of 10, and you can see the 23 left over. Then we have to tackle the five. There are not five singles to take away from, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cross up this one this time so it makes more sense. I'm going to regroup. So I'm going to take this group of 10 and I'm going to split it into 10 ones. I like to stay organized when I'm doing my singles. I like to make groups of five just so I don't have dots flowing everywhere. I want to make sure I'm keeping track. So let's make sure we still have 23 left. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. The reason I did that, I changed this one group of 10 into 10 ones. So now that I can cross off the five that are left over. Okay, so let's get rid of them. One, two, three, four, five. What I mean by the five that's left over, the five we still need to subtract. Okay, so if we do, we were at 23. If we subtract five more, we're left with 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And we're left with 18. So. When we are thinking about subtraction with two-digit numbers in the early grades, we do want them visualizing the representation. We want them making sense of what happens when you have to regroup. You have a group of 10. You need to make it 10 ones. That way you can subtract. We're building their understanding for the later grades, and we're helping them picture it with a representation. So if you want your child practicing subtracting groups of 10, subtracting two-digit numbers, just give them a bunch of two-digit numbers, have them do the representation where they show all with strips and singles. I call them strips and singles because that's the way our curriculum refers to it. There's a strip of 10, and these are the singles, the ones place. Um, if you give them that and have them practice, they're going to start building this understanding that the ones place does not change when we subtract a group of 10. You can have them start exploring the hundreds chart as well. And then you're going to also be developing their understanding of a group of 10 can be changed to 10 ones, and then we can subtract, which is what is actually happening in the standard algorithm for addition or for subtraction. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to check out the other subtraction videos so you can see how subtraction builds through the years um, and subtraction of mixed numbers and subtraction of decimals. They're all related, starting in first grade, kindergarten, all the way up to fifth. Okay, bye.